Hi everybody, T-Geek Eric here again for another unboxing video. Um, I should have just called the series like T-Show and Tell because I'm actually not opening anything new this time, uh, but I do have something to show off. Um, this is a, a T, I'll turn it around and show you the, the name in a little bit, but first I'll tell you where I got this. Uh, so I was staying in um, Hangzhou for most of the time that I was in China this summer. I was there for about a month and a half, and at the very end of my trip, um, some professors from Tufts University, where I'm a graduate student, joined us, and we went down to Fujian province to a city called Sunming, uh, which is near, uh, near-ish to Fuzhou, and uh, went there to check out some tea farms, um, specifically farms that were growing Oriental Beauty in China, which is uh, a Taiwanese um, style, or was invented in Taiwan. Um, but I'll tell you more about that in another video. Uh, so we stayed in, so here's here an aside, uh, Chinese geography is confusing to me. So Sunming is a city, and according to Wikipedia, it's a prefecture-level city that has nine counties, two districts, and a city inside of it. I don't, that doesn't make sense to me. <laughs> but anyways, I would say staying in a, in a hotel in Sha County, inside of Sunming City. And all these different counties in Sunming um, were known for different types of tea. So some counties were known for growing really good Jia Guan Yin, um, others for growing Oriental Beauty, like I mentioned. Um, and the tea shop in our hotel, our hotel had a tea shop in it, was selling a type of tea that I'd never heard of before that was from Sha County. It was called Hongbian Cha. Hongbian Cha. So that's what, there's the characters for it. So it literally means red edge tea, um, red red edges of the leaves and uh our um so there was there was a tea shop there and there was a woman brewing tea for people so i sat and tasted tea with her for a while and she was very nice she um i think had a a little bit of a crush on my companion um who uh she told him at one point he spoke a little bit of mandarin and she told him at one point uh you have a very long nose in mandarin <laughs> and i think that was probably a compliment um, but also at the end, she ended up giving him a discount on his teaware in exchange for taking a selfie with him. Um, so anyway, she was, she was a kick. She was fun. Uh, so we hung out with her and drank tea for a lot and I decided I would buy some of this tea. Um, it's pretty tasty. It is a twisted leaf style oolong. So I'll show you what it looks like here. Get the white balance right. Maybe, maybe it'll do it. Uh, no, that's pretty dark, but uh it's a twisted leaf style oolong it's a, it's roasted um it looks very much like a yancha like a from wuyi um although it's not from that area so wuyi is also in fujian province but this is not not a wuyi oolong um it tastes a little bit like one but not not exactly the same um i, I remember drinking it there it's been a while since i've had it uh, drinking it there and thinking that it tasted a little bit like Tia Kuan Yin and a little bit like a, a Wu Yi uh, rock oolong. So um, I'm going to brew this up and uh, tell you what I think about it. And I've also, I'll have also i show you this uh, cool little travel tea set that I got later on in the trip in um, Shanghai that I'll, I'll brew it in. So let me get my water heated up and everything and I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. Um, my water's all hot, and I'm going to try to show you guys brewing the tea. I haven't I've kind of cut that out of other videos because I have a hard time talking and making tea at the same time. But I'm going to try to do it because I've had a couple people comment and ask me about how I'm brewing these teas. Um, so I'll show you. I got this neat little travel set. Uh, I'm not sure how practical it is, but it was kind of cool novelty. It was cheap and um, bought this in Shanghai. And inside, we've got... A gaiwan, little tiny gaiwan, but still a gaiwan, and a um, a pitcher, pouring pitcher. It's got this little tiny spout. This is, I think, the the where the the practicality kind of fails because this thing is actually really terrible at pouring. Um, and then I've got a whole bunch of cups, so I'll just set up three or something, even though I'm drinking tea by myself. And it also comes with some tongs. And you could definitely fit like a cloth or something in there um, to use instead of a, a, bamboo, a bamboo tray like this um, to just catch spills and things like that. So let me heat up the teaware first. 
Um, so if you've never brewed tea this way, I, I'm assuming most of the people watching this have brewed tea this way, or at least know what I'm doing. But in case you haven't, this is a style of brewing um, called Gong Fu Cha that's often called the Chinese tea ceremony, although I, I would argue, and I think many people that do this would argue, it's not really a ceremony, it's just a way of brewing tea. And the goal is to steep a tea um, with many uh, short infusions with a small volume to maximize the, the flavor um, and get everything you can out of your tea. So really it's just a way of making good tea. And the tongs are just, I don't use them that often um, because I usually end up dropping the cups when I do that. <laughs> but they're, they're so you can uh, rinse off the teaware and manipulate the cups and everything without touching them with your fingers, so just for sanitary purposes, basically. But I'm not very good with them at practice. And also my shoulder's messed up right now, so it makes it hard to, <laughs> to do this a little bit. Uh, so I'll tell you a little bit more about this tea, this Hongbian Cha. Um, it's, uh, when, when I first, when she told me what the name was, I looked it up on uh, Babelcarp. So if you don't know about Babelcarp, it's a really cool um, online translator, Chinese to English translator, that's specific to tea terms. So it's almost, it's like a dictionary, it's somewhere in between a dictionary and like a encyclopedia for tea terms in Chinese. And there's not an entry for Hongbian Cha. So that was one of the reasons why I was like, well, I gotta buy this um, if it's not on Babelcarp, you know. So if anybody out there has heard of this tea before, I would love to hear um, where you heard of it or where you've tasted it before. Was it in Sanming somewhere or um, have you had it in the United States? Have you seen it exported somewhere? Um, I really like it and I'd be interested if there was some source for it in the United States. And I went through all that trouble for using the tongs for the cups and I'm using my hand to kind of measure the tea. So I'm gonna put a lot of tea in here. In, in Gong Fu Cha, you use uh, more tea for the volume of the water than you do in Western style brewing. And it smells pretty roasty. It's, um, it smells a lot like a, a it smells a lot like a rock oolong, like a wu yi rock oolong, like I said before. Now I'm gonna rinse the leaves. So we rinse the teaware to warm it up and we rinse the leaves to get rid of any dust or pesticide residue. And also it helps open up the leaves a little bit and make it easier to brew. And this is kind of a difficult set to use because <laughs> this guy wants really thin so it gets super hot. And there's no saucer, so it's it's really hard to pick up and use. It's still, it's still pretty cool that it's this little travel thing, but it is not super practical. And like I said, the pitcher doesn't pour very well. So I rinsed my tea. Rinsed my teaware. So this style of brewing, Gong Fu Cha, was uh, originated in um, Guangdong province. And it's a popular way to brew oolong all over China now. And so our hotel in, uh, in Fujian province had a set in the hotel room that you could use. So just like hotel rooms in the West always have coffee makers, there was a set like this with cups, a tray, tongs to move the cups, and a gaiwan to brew with, and a little pitcher um, right in the hotel room for you to use to, to make your tea. So I thought that was pretty neat. And we're going to do just a, that was even probably too long of a steeping. That's okay. It's been a while since I've brewed this. I don't really remember what it likes. I'm using boiling water. And uh, got a cup for me and two cups for some friends. <laughs> and then uh, I would serve them with the tongs to kind of wipe off the bottom because it's wet and serve it to whoever, whoever's here. So. so this is the first infusion. The roast is a little bit more than I remembered. It's almost like a caramely kind of roast to it. But it doesn't 
it doesn't it's not the same kind of roasty flavor as a roasted wu yi oolong it it does it, it does taste a little bit like a tie kuan yin that's the that's the best way i can describe it it's sort of in between those two so i'm going to brew up a second infusion of it so the great thing about brewing tea this way gong fu cha is um, you can brew a good tea at least you should be able to brew at least three times uh, regardless of the type of tea um, oolongs you can generally get a lot more steepings out of than black teas or green teas and um, the change the, the flavors change through multiple steepings so you'll pick up um, more of the aroma in the first steeping maybe and more of the the mouth feel in the second steeping and um, you'll, you'll have flavors that sort of change as you go through uh, in multiple infusions. The aroma on the lid of the gaiwan is just a, like a little bit floral. Um, you mostly smell that roastiness, but it's a little bit floral. And we'll taste the second infusion. Yeah, it's a really nice tea. It's really smooth, very drinkable. And it stood up really well to a lot. I, I think I did pretty long steep times on these. Um, I could probably go shorter. And uh, it stood up to the really long steep times, though, well. It does. Sometimes, sometimes oolongs, or, or especially Ti Kuan Yin, if you steep it too long, you get kind of this sour um, sour aftertaste that's unpleasant. And it, this doesn't have that at all. So I don't know really much about this tea. Um, if I'd have to guess, and it's so. Fujian province does grow both Chie Kuan Yin and uh, Wu Yi. Wu Yi Shan is there, so these Wu Yi rock oolongs are, are in that um, province too. So if I had to guess, I would say that this is maybe a Chie Kuan Yin cultivar or a different cultivar grown, you know, in a, in a more um, traditional kind of terraced way rather than in these cliffs like in, in Wu Yi mountain, um, but that it was it's processed like a Wu Yi oolong. So it's processed with the, the twisted leaves. Um, I think the uh, picking plucking standard is maybe a little bit, like there's some pretty long leaves in there. Um, they're not huge, but there are some, some more mature leaves. And uh, maybe once I brew this a few more times, I'll be able to open some of these up and, and try to take a picture of them to add to the, the video. Um, and I, that name, that red edge oolong is, supposedly because the edges of the leaves are oxidized but it's a little bit hard to tell in this version of it at least because um it's also roasted so you know they're pretty even colored looking to me uh but supposedly only the edge of the leaves is has got that reddish tint to it um so just partially oxidized yeah anyway that's it for the hongbian cha and this cool little cool but maybe not super practical travel set and uh, I think this is going to be the last of these unboxing videos for a while at least. And thank you for watching them. And if you haven't seen the others, there's uh, more episodes that you can watch by um, clicking, we'll say, up there is where, <laughs> where I'll put the annotation. Uh, click over there to uh, start the series from the beginning. And uh, let me know what you think. And if you like this kind of style, of this sort of show and tell style of video, um, I'll make some more again when next time I have something to, to uh, show and tell, show and teach about. All right, so thanks for watching. And uh, please subscribe to the channel. There will, there will be other videos, even if they're not these unboxing videos. We'll have um, our Let's Talk Tea series uh, starting up again, hopefully soon. And uh, so keep an eye out for that. And if you subscribe, you'll get notified of those things. And you can also follow TGeek on Google Plus or Twitter. You can follow me on Google Plus or Twitter. And all that information is going to be in the description below the video. All right. Thanks for watching. Bye.